So this is the hell of Nigeria show. Hell of Nigeria show. Don't you dare touch the dial. Hell of Nigeria. Don't you get touch the dial? Don't you get touch the dial? Cause it's hello Nigeria. Hello Nigeria. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. My apologies. We are now joined in the studio by an activist that has dedicated a lot of his life to nation building and development. So, of course, on Democracy Day, there is no other to speak to us than Benga Daniel Ademujimi. And he's right here in the studio with us. How are you doing today, sir? Happy Democracy Day. Happy Democracy <laughs> Day. <laughs> are you excited about it, though? About which one now? The second Democracy Day. Um, let's, the fact that it was shifted to June 12th. Okay, yes, I'm excited, maybe 30%. Okay, explain the 30% and then the 70% as to why not. 25 years after Chief Mashud Kashima Walawali Abiola sacrificed his life for this, um, Nigeria should have gone higher than this level. That's the sad part. Mm. A child of, two, a, a daughter that was born 25 years ago should be preparing for wedding now. Do you get it? A son who was given back to 25 years ago should be a graduate now if he doesn't have any problem with his education. So Why shouldn't he be preparing for wedding? Do? <laughs> <laughs> you are thinking my yeah. thoughts. <laughs> it, it is not a law. It's not a doctrine. It's not a policy. But what I'm trying to tell you is that 25 years old is old is and mature old enough, enough time. We understand. to start preparing for life. So we have a new Democracy Day, and from next year, it's going to be a public holiday for all Nigerians. Yeah. We know that Lagos states not only already... Lagos, not only Southwest. Lagos. Exactly, for all Nigerians. Yeah. Lagos states have, however, started uh, already this year with their public yeah. stuff at least. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it important that we actually transitioned Democracy Day from the 29th of May to the 12th of June? Yes, it is very, very important because of the symbol. It is significant. The symbol matters. Um, green, white, green is our flag, but that's our symbol. Anywhere you go to, you see American flag, that's a symbol. Um, I met um, the Minister of Communication in South Africa some time ago, and she explained to me what is obtainable in South Africa, how the Govambeki family, um, the water Sizulu, apart from Nessie Mandela Madiba, you know, um, other people that fought for the apartheid in South Africa, a kind of compensation plan that is given to their lineage till the end of age is there constitutionally. Do you understand? And how significant places, airports, universities, public holidays are attached to these names and families. So it is, it is good for us to identify. For 25 years, nobody identified with this man and his family except few of us that we have been carrying June 12 on our head since. We've not seen any federal government that has, you know, apart from, oh, today is June 12. In fact, for me, federal government had not identified before now because if, if they identify, even if May 29 was chosen as Democracy Day, for whatever reason the former president chose, you understand, for whatever reason, personal or public, they should have done something to identify that, okay, June 12th, this, you know, that was the, that was the, I mean, the, 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 I, I, I could say the best election that we've had in this country, as far as I'm concerned, in, 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 in 1993. So it, it's symbolic. There's something about that day. Nobody talked about religion. Nobody talked about, people didn't vote because you are from Hausa or you are Igbo, you know. Everybody brought their voice together to ensure that, you know what, we are tired of these military juntas. Let's move to democracy so that our lives could be better. 
I like so, that you also mentioned whilst you were talking about South Africa, you talked yeah. about Madiba and yeah. how it's almost impossible to tell the story of Mandela without mm. talking about Mandela. He's tell the story of South Africa, South Africa without, without Mandela. Like, they call him their mini god. Yes, people go to South Africa and then they go to visit Madiba's house and they're taking on a journey and it's some sort of tourism attraction. If you go to South Africa and you don't visit Madiba's house in Villa Kasi Street, so where to? You have not visited South Africa. Exactly. And Robert now Iver. let's go back to Nigeria here. It's Standard in our, a line in our national anthem says, the labor of our Five heroes past, past shall never be in vain. vain. But are we doing enough to tell the story of the labor of our heroes past? Lots of people have complained of of the fact that our young people, our students, our pupils are not being taught. They're not being taught history. So a lot of them don't think, a lot of them don't even know just how much was sacrificed. Mm. So what are the ways in which we can really push for the labor of our heroes past to be told, apart from bringing back history, history to schools? Mm. And apart from declaring this as a public holiday. Yes. Thank you very much. One of the propositions is um, we have other people that presently they are in MKO's house now, at Toyin Street, MKO Crescent, presently now. We've been there since 7 a.m. We came here, you know, and people are still there, and they'll be there maybe till 4 p.m. You know, jamborees are going, um, symposium is going on, presidential roundtable is going on with president, uh, presidential aspirant for 2019. A lot is going on as I speak to you. But guess what? A people without history has no future. When you take history out of, you see, there is a reason why you are telling a story today. It's because you don't want your lineage, you don't want the tree you've planted, you don't want the fruit to be wasted. So today, you have a Nigerian child, a Nigerian youth or teenager, who can tell you everything about a Kardashian, <laughs> but knows nothing about his own Minister of Education. So apart from bringing history back to school, one of the things we are proposing is that MKO's house should become a national tourist center. Just as Fela and Nikolapo's house at um, 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 Simi, around them, Allen Avenue. It's, it's, it's a tourist, uh, tourist center now. That place should be a national center for tourist attraction, that house. Do you understand? That's number one. Number two, our students, our teenagers, our youth should be engaged at all levels, whether religious center, civil society organizations, wherever they go, they should be engaged in what is obtainable in this land. Right, even before the amalgamation, right from the creation of the kingdoms, the Bini kingdoms, the Oyo Empire, you know, the caliphate in the north, everything they should know. It has to be incorporated in every day-to-day -day, um, lifestyle of our youth. Or oh, yes, Would you, you can imagine you ask, <laughs> I asked one teenager recently, uh, who, is the, who is the minister of education? He was looking at me. Are you at school in Nigeria? But ask that person many questions abroad, he or she will tell you. So, it, and it, it starts with parenting. I tell people, your education does not start in that one million naira school fees you are paying. It starts from your house, from your home. Do you understand? Let me ask you a question. Let us assume that you have a child now, today, and be truthful. Forget that you are national TV. If your son or your daughter fails English language in school, what will you do to him or her? I would definitely have a session with her, probably get her a lesson teacher if I am not able to spend time to Okay, teach her what as part well. of Nigeria are you from? Okay. Okay. From the state. Okay. So if your child fails your local your mother tongue. Oh yeah, I'm an advocate for my mother tongue. So okay. I am someone who Okay, so maybe you are one. one. No, no, no. Maybe I you are one out of a thousand. No, there are many people actually. Do you maybe you are one of a thousand. You know that today when people when their children face English We've overrated this imposed language. French, English, Do you Mandarin. understand? You and now we are, not, we are not even bringing Chinese to our curriculum. That says a lot about us. We need to think, sit down, think about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I completely agree with you on that. And I'll, I'll quickly tell you why. Because Olive and I had this discussion where I was saying to her that although I was even born and raised in Ibadan, mm. and I went to school in Ibadan, we are, you, get, are you serious? Yeah, Which we'd school? even, uh, <laughs> I don't say it on national TV, okay, but sorry, I'll tell okay. you after. We'd are you even, serious? But we'd even get uh, detentions if we didn't speak in either English or French. And it was you called vernacular if you spoke any language. Exactly. Mm. You had so, to pay a certain amount, amount just like of money. the way they have swear jars. Exactly. They have a vernacular jar where you pay yeah. a certain amount of money if you speak Igbo or you speak Yoruba. Exactly. English. So mm. you then, I then got brought up only speaking English and French. And even though my parents tried to instill it at home, mm. 
if your school is telling you otherwise and you're going through your developmental years, yeah. there's only so much that's really going to change in you. Mm. And the problem definitely does start from our education system. I'll agree with you on that because I am basically a product mm. of that of failure. That. Are, you, are, are you aware that Finland is number one educational country in the world mm. and they don't do grading? Do you understand? Yeah. Yes. The Scandinavian countries, you will never see them doing grading. You can't go to Germany today and you say you want to do any course. The you first thing you learn is first. the language. Sure. Why do you think India is championing mathematics, other calls, IT all over the world? Because, listen to me, you pass geography, you pass economics, you pass biology, you pass accounting and all that. Then you fail English language. The question is, which language did you use to write other subjects that you passed? Very interesting. So what are they marking? The technicalities or what? All right. Now, away from that, All before right. we let you go real quick, yeah. it's important because today we are celebrating Moshud Kashima Wola Wali Abiola. Abiola. Let's look at his life. What mm. are the lessons that our modern-day politicians can learn? We know how much mm. of a philanthropist he is. He was, you know, how much he, he was so loved by the people. He had over 100 chieftaincy titles. So what are the things, if you look at his life, what lessons can our modern-day politicians and young people learn? As far back as 1992, 1993, that, um, no, 1991 to 1992, before the election, I remember that Chief MKO had this scheme for all higher institutions in Nigeria to be giving them money, which means education is priority for him. He was, he was, he was supporting, you know, giving aid to our higher institutions, not, not personal scholarships that he's giving to people. I'm talking about institutions. He was doing that. That's key. Our modern-day politicians, like you put it, I agree with you, modern-day politicians should understand that education is a key factor in liberating people from poverty. It's definitely the bedrock of any society. Thank you, ma. That's number one. Number two, there is something we need to learn from this man. He's a team player. When you see his campaign, when you see things that he does, I've, I've, I've visited two people of his lieutenant, when he was alive, I won't mention their names. Today, they are big in their, they are social entrepreneurs and they are big. I visited one in Ghana, I visited one in Nigeria. And they told me that, you know what, Chief MK will never behave as if he's the Alpha and Omega of this organization. He carries everybody along. I never worked with him, but I've related with people who work with him. Do you understand? And I've listened to his children at every point in time. You understand? So that's key. Number three, you see his, the, the bane of his campaign in 1993 was fear well to poverty. And that is why his philanthropic activities cut across. He hated poverty. And the last thing I noticed about him, do you know that Not Too Young to Run Bill was first campaigned by Chief MK? Go and check his, if you go to YouTube, if you go, to, go and check his, his you know, his write-ups, you will see. As at that time, I remember um, um, Mike Iguini. Mike Iguini is the INEC residential officer for, I think, Akwai Bomb State, I mean, yeah, for, for, for now, he said on national TV and he said, that do you know that MKO was interested in people like us as young as we were then, that we should invade the political space? So the man had been crying about not too young to run bill ever since, only that people didn't see it the way our own younger ones portray it this day. So with these few points, I believe very strongly that our modern day Politicians should learn a lot. Listen to me. You are not a success until you have a successor. Our politicians, you understand that, come, still struggling for office at age 65, 70 is an abuse for me. Trust me. This is my personal opinion. It may not be a, uh, a universal acceptance. But the truth of the matter is, what are you still looking for after how many years? By now, I tell people, if you are 50 years old and you cannot point to somebody who can actually do stuff on your behalf, who can actually uh, uh, run things, run affairs on your behalf, then you are a failure. Mm. So our modern day politicians, you understand that, that henceforth, they should begin to raise our younger generation. They should raise people, not to be using them. I wrote an article recently, Nigerian youth or Nigerian used. Mm. I think that should simmer. We should leave that food <laughs> for thought. That is Nigerian very much for thought. Or Nigerian, or Nigerian use. use. Thank yeah. you so much for joining Thank us. You, Thank sir. you, sir. It's much. been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.